Hey, I'm back with a very different video topic. So this is going to be for anyone who watched the show Empire. Even if you watched it a couple of times, I'm going to be honest with you. I liked the show, but then I didn't catch the last three series seasons. So I rewatched the whole series for about two months nonstop and really wanted to get an understanding of each sign, each character's zodiac sign. I have their zodiac sign, talk about some of their moon signs. Now again, when I do videos or content like this, I'm not worried about what, uh, if someone's like, well, wait, that person can't be a Leo because in the in the show, their birthday was at, was during Christmas. Like, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking of as an astrologer, looking at this prototype, this character type, what sign would this person be through tracking their behavior, tracking what they say, and tracking all of the different events that happen around the characters, okay? Also, I know that when given presentations, less words is usually better however for these type of videos remember the words on the screen are typically for me so that I can keep track of what I want to say make sure I don't miss anything so I'm hoping more you know just listen in I promise you, it'll make sense um, you can definitely read through the read through what I wrote if you want to but again that's not the intention the intention is just to kind of you know explain and have you listen in now we've got to start with Lucius Lyon okay um, the patriarch of the family so I said that Lucius has to be a Gemini Sun, Scorpio Moon, and I'll talk more about the other parts I put in there in a minute. Because this man, when I was watching the show, I'm like, this is all about his word, his his words. Not only is he, you know, in the show, not only is he the head, you know, the CEO of Empire, he also was an artist, a music artist, right? He wrote music. Him and Cookie both um, had wrote music, right? In the show so he's a mastermind he's good with words he could talk people in or out of anything and i'm talking about different types of people so the thing that stood out to me the most about lucius wasn't just his power moves it was his words it was the fact that every time he got to someone the way he which he said things even when he was insulting people so he probably also would be a gemini son with the mercury and gemini as well but the scorpio moon part is because i feel like there is still this layer to him of this loyalty and this need to hold on to things right so as you've seen also in the in the show he could not him and him and cookie cookie had this very like push-pull relationship as we know um for those who watched it like they are this these people that are just never going to get over each other they're never going to get over each other they try to have a relationship something messes up but they never let go of each other even if they have other relationships so when um terrence got um not terrence i'm sorry when lucius got uh was played by terrence howard when he got betrayed by bunky and vernon for anyone who watched the show you know who they were if you didn't watch the show all that much you don't really need to know who they are just know he's going to get revenge okay and the Scorpio moon, so he plays it cool, calm, and collected. That's why I said this is a Gemini sun, Aries rising. When you see Lucius, you don't think anything's getting to him. It's only when something is serious that the, the, the smirk and the little laughter and the kind of snarkiness goes away. That's why I said I'm believing this is not a Scorpio sun person. This is a person who's very uh, sarcastic, jovial. Uh, this is a person who's very confident. And it comes off in a way that I was like, okay, I think this is also some fire dynamic to him. Now, he did sabotage other through his words. That's I said, I said that's a combination of the Scorpio moon and the Gemini sun. The Gemini sun is the traits he's going to feel the most comfortable displaying. But that moon, when something really bothers him emotionally, he's going to react. But he's not going to react in an explosive way unless he's really angry when you see that Aries rising come out. Now, he never completely ruins his own family. Remember, the Scorpio moon is attached attachment and it scorpio it doesn't really matter what if it's attached to something good or bad it's deciding what it's attaching itself to that is the, the biggest marker of the scorpio okay um if, and if a scorpio individual is attaching themselves to something good you're going to get a good outcome if they're attaching themselves to something they think is going to grow and get more power then of course we can have some um you know traumatic or devastating situations now, the reason I said in Aries rising is because he moves in a way similar to Hakeem, but Hakeem is way more explosive. Hakeem is way more impulsive. Lucius is strategic, and he's very strategic in a way that allows for us to understand that he's a thinker. That is why I said there has to be some Gemini-type energy in his chart. You know, Virgo, I, re I really, th yeah, he's very Mercurian. But I didn't sense the Virgo because the Gemini, just the way the things roll off his tongue, just the way he's quick, this, just the way and there's kind of even a Gemini. Remember, if by degree a Gemini, Gemini and Aries by degree can sextile, there's a very, right, there's a very expressive nature to Lucius. Now, he's a more 
controlled version of Hakeem. But I also saw in both of them this kind of inconsistency though, because you would see Lucius doing something one minute and then the next minute something else because something has, you know, disrupted what's going on. So through the Aries, right? Remember the rising is always this kind of nature of responsive reactiveness um, to how life, you know, how we have to sometimes embark on certain things, right? And so you see that a lot with him, even in relationships. Lucius is never alone. Lucius is never single. Like if you look at the show, there's some people that are just never single, him and Hakeem. And I'm not saying this is an Aries trait, but if you looked at my video about the Aries, um, love styles of Aries, there is a need for affection. There is a need for activity in many Aries individuals. And so with someone like the moon and Scorpio still craving a level of intimacy, you do tend to see that with him where like Lucius is always attached to some woman, right? Um, even if it's not serious. Now, um, I, the other reason I say I think he is very much one, the Aries rising is also entrepreneurship. The Aries rising can also be the person who's the starter, who's a pioneer of something. He always reminds us, empire is mine. I started empire, right? Of course, cookie help, but um, he feels like he's nothing without empire. You know, if you watch the seasons where his son takes over at, at, at two points in the show, both sons take over, not at the same time, but uh, well, Hakeem took over and then um, Andre took over. So, you know, it has an emotional hold on him because this is his. This is something he worked towards, it, right? And it is a sense of his, his power and his confidence comes from having an, having empire, an empire, right? So we see that. Um, he's also, the, the reason I said this is a Gemini type nature to me is he's always two steps ahead of everyone. He's always thinking. He's curious he's questioning things when he sees something that doesn't look right he questions it okay um and so he doesn't just take take things at face value the reason also i said there is i feel there's a scorpionic and aries type nature is i feel that his character has the markers of mars and pluto it's very plutonic mars like energy definitely is a person that kind of has both energy scorpio and aries within the chart now, the, the reason I said there's a water energy here is because he cries during situations of extreme duress. Now, we have to understand, no, I'm not saying all water signs cry. Everyone has cried before. It doesn't really matter your sign. But what I'm saying is that Scorpio, things get to him deep. And when something is a vulnerable point, you see his eyes water. You see him react. And so he does care. When his son, his when his sons were shot, like each, each son has had an issue with getting shot. I don't remember if Andre was, but I know that... Um, uh, Jamal was shot, Hakeem was shot. They've all had, you know, they've all had a medical, um, type of medical emergency. And so you see that emotion in him that he cares, but again, he's not going to wear that he cares on the outside. He's done and said some pretty mean spirited things to his sons, right? Um, but also the reason I said Aries rising, he centers himself in everything, right? Even when it looks like Lucius is doing the right thing, he's always got to find a way to center himself. His son has an album. He's got to perform to her. His son is, is nominated for an award. Lucius finds a way to get himself nominated to Lucius is very, very much into always reminding everybody he's the boss. Now, Cookie lying. Cookie has to be fired. She's very fiery, very much. But the reason why I went with Sagittarius over a Aries moon is I feel that her natural ability to understand the bigger picture really stood out to me. That when anytime something would happen, she'd be like, Lucius, why are we doing that? We know that this isn't going to work. Or Lucius, uh, why don't we do this? Because then our family will finally have X, Y, and Z. Like, I feel like she really understood the bigger picture. So while he's doing power moves, Cookie is always reminding him of things in a, the, the more expansive way, which I felt was more of a Sagittarius nature, whereas her Aries moon is how she reacts to life. She's very independent. She's very self-aware. But, you know, she's independent, but also a little codependent as well, Lucius. So, you know, there's there's a different, there's an interesting dynamic there. But I said Virgo rising because she works a lot and she's always on a project. She It just reminds us of, she always reminds us of how hard she worked. She reminds us, yeah, I came out of prison, but guess what? I gave Lucius the money to help make Empire like she reminds us she wants her just do right um but the also reason I said that I think that it's not just a pure fire energy and cookie is that she is helpful you know when pound cake the woman that she was in prison with was on her deathbed um you know she got out of prison as well and she had to go visit her 
Um, she wanted Cookie to help her find her daughter. Um, Cookie has done many things that are actually very nice, that are very, very things where she, she thinks of other people. We know the Sagittarius does tend to have that nature, that kind of humanitarian element to it as well. But at the same time, like, because Sagittarius, if, if the person is well developed in their morals and their values, they tend to want to live in that way. Now, of course, you have different types of Sagittarius because we also know that she could be blunt, she could be truthful, she could be very direct, okay? Don't play with Cookie. Um, but also, like, she has a side to her where she knows to do the right thing, you know. Um, when she, you know, offended uh, Melody, who was um, the transgender woman um, on the show, who was the singer in one of the later seasons, like, she apologizes because she didn't, you know, she apologized that her her comment or her assumption or something might have been, um, you know, seen as insensitive. So she has this side to her where we would not see Lucius do that. Lucius does not apologize. Lucius says whatever he wants to anyone, and he doesn't have that same ability or doesn't want to do that. Whereas when we see that she is, she has that more helpful side to her or she has that side where she sees the bigger picture, she wants things to be in a way where she feels is aligned with what's right and what's wrong and she wants to help. That's a Sag Virgo energy coming together, okay? It could be the person who's a firecracker, but they always do the right thing in the end. That's the combination of Virgo and Sagittarius. Now, um, even when she went to jail, she believed it was for a cause. She sacrificed it for her family. You know, she's very loyal to that in that regard. Now, that, again, is it's a fiery thing because there's a there's a kind of, um, there would have to be a little confidence there, right? Because it's not a typical Virgo thing, but it's really more her fire energy, right? Um, I definitely would say, like, even someone is quoted, I forgot who said it, but I wrote it down in my notes, like, someone said, you got fire in you, right? So it, you can see it in Cookie. She's sassy, but she's, she's in intelligent, she's beautiful, she's quick-witted, she's talented, she's a lot of different things in one woman. Um, she has decorum though, you know, she's sassy, you know, in that regard, but she also knows when to be polite. When she meets um, Dubois' mom, she's very polite. Like she knows, that's why I said she's a Virgo rising. She knows how to put on the right, and it's, Virgo is not image, it's Virgo knows and understands social cues in a way to not stand out and be too ostentatious. And even though she has this fire energy, it's eventually going to come out. <laughs> the rising can't hold you down for too long if you have this other energy in you. But the Virgo rising is like she understands there's a need to be correct. And that's a Virgo rising thing. Um, also, when she went off on Jamal's counsel during his rehab, she apologized. So we see that she's able to understand when she needs to come back and make things right. Right? Again, like I said, when she disagrees with Lucius, she sees the bigger picture. Now, also, she has more faith than Lucius. And I was really teetering between is she a Pisces moon or an Aries moon? And, and I get that the, the default would be for everyone to think, oh, she's got a lot of fire in her. But the, the, the fact she does have a sensitivity to her, um, she does get hurt easily. She just doesn't like to show it. So I also would wonder if maybe if this if, if Cookie would have a 12th house energy or, or a Neptune, some type of Neptune significant placement, or also maybe her Aries moon is at a very, very, um, her Aries moon is at a very, um, you know, beginning degree, right? So maybe the moon, Aries moon is at the zero degree or the first degree, very close to almost Pisces. I don't know. But um, I, the reason I say this is because she has more faith in Lucius and you could really say that's a Sagittarius thing, but it's also, you know, the Piscean nature of like seeing and feeling and, and being compassionate that she tends to have when times get tough. Um, and she gave up Devon at first. Um, so Devon was one of the singers that was going to sign with her or could sign with Empire once it was taken over. It's a whole different story. So once Empire was taken over and Cookie and Lion no longer had it and they had to fight for it back, um, there was a singer, but he had a very hard family life or his sister needed medical care and he couldn't afford it. So she almost gave up Devon. She went back and she 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 was going to give him back to Empire so he could make more money to help his family. So you see this like level of empathy that Cookie has or she wants to help people. She's of service and that's why it's a very Virgo one or Pisces like thing. The son she connects to the most is Jamal. Now, if Jamal is, as I said, a Virgo, Obviously, Sagittarius and Virgo are square signs, especially if they're squaring by an exact degree, right? Not exact degree, but if the degrees are close enough to square. But his sun would contract her rising, and they're mutable. So they're able to kind of work through things, you know, like, can we adapt to things? We're not going to stay stuck in the same feeling. You see that difference between Cookie and um, with uh, the fixed nature, perhaps, of um, the fixed immutable energy of, of, of 
Lucius would be, his sun would also be mutable, but his, his moon would be fixed, okay? Now, her relationship with Hakeem, another fire sign, evolves, but they're at odds with each other a lot in the beginning. Fire and fire, woo. So especially if she's at Aries moon and he's an Aries sun, a lot of times people make assumptions, oh, fire will always get along. Earth will always get along with each other. No, it means you understand one another. It does not mean you always get along. But eventually a relationship gets better when they understand one another, okay? Um, her relationship with Andre, to me, is not as strong. Now, she cares for him. Of course, it's her son. And at the end, the later season, you really see her, you know, when he's fighting with his health issues. Um, that is especially when you see it come out. But she doesn't have as much of a strong energy with Andre, I say, than as the others. But she definitely has a strongest relationship with Jamal on the show. Um, now, also, if we have um, J Andre as a cancer, her moon is squaring his sun. And it's difficult for them to really put their issues you know behind themselves at first okay so let's go in order um andre line is the oldest of the lion boys he is the most um educated he went to college i believe he had an mba he's the business oriented one he is not the entertainer though the other two brothers are in the music industry andre helps work and works at empire with their legal issues and their business decisions but he is not an entertainer which does seem to be a point of contention with andre sometimes the feeling like his acceptance from his dad is different because he's not in the entertainment industry or he's not a performer so if he is a cancer son there's a lot of emotional upheaval with andre so andre um also struggles with bipolar disorder and though he is not a representation of all people with bipolar disorder that is a part of the theme of the show in terms of his character of how he presents so well on the outside right that capricorn moon in him he fuels this need this need this need to succeed and this need to be successful and you see it sometimes with his sense of composure now i was torn between well would i call him a capricorn son or what I call him a cancer moon. But the reason I call him a cancer sun is because his emotions are visible and it's not really hidden within in. It doesn't take much to see that that Andre is very in, in a, always in a sense of trying to control himself, trying to compose himself. He puts himself under immense pressure to be successful. And I also said that he would be a Libra rising just because of his outer demeanor and also just because of the way in which he wishes to be perceived um he doesn't like to ruffle feathers he tends to especially when you look at like the way in which he kind of um the, he sweet talks people you know he's the professional lion he's the the intelligent lion he's the one that can kind of talk people and kind of like but terrence how remember the gemini is not as i'm not trying the, gem, the gemini energy is i'm not trying to get you to like me i'm just disseminating the information i'm just telling you what i think or i'm just saying i'm just saying what i what i know whereas libra is i'm trying to connect to you so he's good at business deals He's good at all of those different, like the kind of, you know, schnoozing with people of higher social classes. That's what Andre's good at. So I think that we would see through through here. Now, a lot of his actions are in response to his emotional connection to people. And so, again, there definitely would be some type of cancer Capricorn access thing going on here because the Capricorn in him is this need to be successful. But the cancer son is you see it. Now, what thing I would also wonder is... I would say like his Mars would probably be in Aries. There's a lot of square energy with with um, with um, Andre being successful, but still having a breaking point. Right. And also, you know, he, he needed Rhonda to help him. He was very much babied. You know, he I feel as though when you think of a cancer person, typically cancer energy needs the feminine connection. Typically it doesn't matter what someone's gender is or someone's orientation. They're typically with cancer energy is going to be this need for the feminine in some way right um and so cookie going to to prison for all those years it, he definitely needs a female presence or he if you look at his relationships with the exception of nessa especially his um i forgot his wife's name towards the end of the show he had another wife because Rhonda um Rhonda was uh was killed or Rhonda died um andre's wife on empire he had another one so she was definitely a caretaker okay so one thing to understand is that with him her name was terry the second wife is that 
You could say because he missed the time with Cookie while she was in prison that he was overcompensating and needing that kind of motherly influence. Now, I'm not saying that would be the reason why he has the struggles he does. But again, only his family knows of him having, you know, mental illness and having medication and things like that. And he wants to be in the family business at any cost. The reason I said Cancer's son is because Cancer is, 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 is directly related to the family and the emotional impact and needing to feel that you are, like, we're lions, we belong here. That is kind of the energy that Andre had. Um, he keeps wanting approval from his father in a way the other sons don't. The other sons don't seek approval. Okay, and I'll explain why more when I go over the other sons. But him, when you have a traditional leaning person, when you have a person who is very much um, you know, um, aware of what they, um, of their family, of their origins, of their family name, that is a Capricorn or Cancer situation, typically you would say Cancer, but also remember Capricorn's about tradition. And so to him, he's looking at like, this is my family business, I need to kind of, you know, rise up. Now, he respects power, Right. He's willing to get his hands dirty, willing to prove himself. Remember, he set Jamal up to get robbed, kind of a ruthless character in some moments. And the reason I say it's a Capricorn moon is because, remember, that's something we can't really see. We don't see it until we actually study his emotional response to the situation, but the Cancer sun in him. Cancer can be very, very good with business as well. I know a lot of times people look at it as like, oh, Capricorn, because Capricorn tends to be more about, you know, um, ambition and things like that. But Cancer is really good because Cancer needs to be successful, some of them, in order to feel that kind of stability. Um, and so, you know, Cancer and Capricorn both need a level of um not to yeah i would say they both need a level of feeling secure and capricorn is through reputation it's through ambition and cancer it's through having what they need to provide for their family being very family oriented and we notice that there's a big thing with andre even when he doesn't have close relationships with people it's always about the kind of family right now when jamal feels like giving up empire he reminds them that they put their blood sweat and tears into it and said the empire is not kingsley but a birthright kingsley was the illegitimate not illegitimate um he was the child of Lucius, the oldest son that nobody knew about. So it's one of those, you know, it's a very typical TV drama, soap opera type of situation where there was this mystery child no one knew about that came up. But I'll talk about Kingsley in a moment. But it's like, that's a Cancer Capricorn type of thing. This is our family. This is ours. That is that energy. Um, and he eventually accepts his half-brother before his death. His uh, half-brother died. You know, all these shows have a lot of death in them. That's just is what it is. Um, so I think that's important to understand about Andre. It's like, that's the things that stand out the most to me about his energy. So with Jamal, I think we are definitely dealing with the Virgo Sun Pisces Moon Cancer Rising. And for some of these, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm 60% sure. But I think this would definitely be Jamal. Because we have to understand, like, the way Jamal's energy, it's, it's very, it's fluid, it's real, it's not combative, it is contemplative right he thinks ahead he questions first you see he seems to value organization right you hear watch this show wait mom i don't know if we want to do that because this and then that, and then that right it's a very virgo type of energy of being or being a little bit more organized and i think forward thinking in terms of the outcome than i think the other members of his family but i think that if Tar uh, taraji's character cookie also was a virgo rising um, you would that's why you would also see this energy kind of coming to play where you see it right also even with the cancer rising like he does what he cares about from the heart okay now let me get back into the virgo sun um the virgo sun is in in you know when a virgo is talented it's not an ego thing it is i'm doing this because i i'm good at it and i'm doing this because i care about the outcome and i'm doing this because i gotta get better right so he's always testing himself to do better. You've seen him in the show where he's like, oh no, that's not going to work. That song doesn't work, man. Like he's hard on himself, right? But also we have to understand that um, he doesn't really like the limelight despite being talented. Like we've noticed that about him, that he, despite having a lot of energy that is impacting people, that's a water type of thing. The ability to evoke emotions in other people through music or art is very much linked often to water. Um, especially Pisces or Cancer. Um, but it's like he's passive sometimes and idealistic when it comes to his family. And I felt that was very much a Pisces moon thing. But also Cancer with like my family, man. I got to do what's right for my family. Yeah, I know my dad just did something wrong, but I'm going to help them anyway. Like when he got cut out of the family deal for Vegas, 
Lucius pushes his album back. He still comes back to help his family in the end, which is like the Virgo loyalty. And Virgo is the earth sign. You'll see another Virgo in this, this, um, this, uh, this video. But I really feel like the Virgo energy would be, we have to get this thing done. And I've been working on this thing. Let's just get it done. It is not always an emotional reaction. And so sometimes it, it doesn't mean that earth signs don't have the same capacity to care. They do. But I think sometimes you need to understand there are certain times able to put away the emotional baggage to get the job done. Just get the thing done, right? Um, but I also think, you know, he leads with his heart and it's about doing what he cares about. Like when he created the anonymous singing group for it to be about the music. Remember, um, you know, he was like with that group with Rumor Willis, um, her character, it was all about the music. And that's a very Pisces thing. Like his energy would be like, yeah, money, we're not doing this just for the money. We're doing this for the music. And I think of all of the people in the show, him and Cookie seem to put that at the forefront the most. The music, the energy of it, the vibration of it, but especially through Jamal's character. Now, Hakeem. Um, we're dealing with, now, of all people, Hakeem, um, of all people, Hakeem seems to be the most um into the limelight into being famous the fame look at me right he is the rap star you know he's jumping on the stage he's getting everybody hype he's fiery he's reckless that's aries energy are all aries like that no if you really want to talk about it right you could get to the aries degree we can look at the houses we're not doing a full birth chart reading about every aries person we're talking about hakeem lion and you know it's, it's this need to be seen, which is the Leo rising though, right? So Aries isn't about fame, it's about independence and it's about following your own, you know, your own way. Whereas with Leo, it's more about talent and being seen and the performative nature of things. And I said the Aries sun and Leo rising because this fiery need to be seen and to be important would be through competing with his own father as CEO. He was, when he was not even ready to do that. As opposed to um, when Andre took over CEO, Andre had the business acumen to do it, right? So there's a difference there, like young and fiery. And I'm just, I had the opportunity because at the time, uh, it, you know, you know how the show had a lot of drama, a lot of, you know, turns and twists. Um, Empire was taken over by Hakeem's former girlfriend. And so she was, give, she gave him the role of CEO against his own father. So um, he doesn't think before speaking. He does not okay Hakeem um is not the most contemplative person in the show okay but he's loyal to whatever feelings he has in the moment okay he makes spur of the moment decisions like when he spilled paint all over his brother's painting you know this this very lashing out thing but remember to understand depending on what energy is in this chart if he's a pure Aries let's say he has other Aries in his other Aries placements and his Leo rising you can sometimes have kind of a childish nature right sometimes some people can have a childishness to them when they don't get what they want um, the, he has the, I only want what I can't have syndrome. When he sees Tiana has a new love interest, he's upset despite having two women at the time, right? Hakeem is always worried about what Tiana's doing. Now the Libra moon, I would say would be an opposition between his sun and moon. I think this family would have a lot of squares and oppositions going on based on all the things that have happened between the characters and, you know, within the individual characters. But I would say that because there's always this attachment. He's always in a relationship, right? He always has to, he's very codependent. Um, he doesn't really like to live alone. He always has a crew with him. Hakeem always has people around him. One, Leo Rising, okay, he's a hype crew, right? But also the Libra moon is like this need, this connectivity. Remember, Libra is not a water sign. So with Libra moons, it's not always about this emotional connection as much as it's about companionship, as much as it's about liking people to balance him. Liking to, because, you know, sometimes his friends would say things and like they would put him in perspective, you know what I mean? So that is something just to keep in mind there about what that looks like with that area. Um, that Libra moon could be now Lucius the reason I said Aries Lucius could be an Aries rising and if that's the case Lucius feels he has the most heart Lucius shows us many times that even though Hakeem can be a bit reckless he feels like Hakeem has the, the kind of brave energy that he likes that he appreciates and that he respects 
Now, eventually, Andre co goes to earn um, Lucia's respect as well after he comes back from prison. Again, if you had to watch the show, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. But Lucius often wants things, others to do things he won't. So that's also the thing to keep in mind about, like, there, Hakeem is way more impulsive than him and he'll watch him be impulsive. Have you ever watched Hakeem do something impulsive? Like when he went, like he'll videotape himself saying something crazy or go crazy doing something. And if at that moment, Lucius is not in a, in a argument or he's not in a uh, conflict with Hakeem, watch Lucius' expression. He'll sit back amused because he has the same energy. And uh, But also with the Leo rising, remember his mood, but his, remember, emotionally they don't seem eye to eye. That's because that moon would be squaring that Leo rising. That Scorpio moon would square that Leo, right? Um, also, Lucius, at the moment when they're in the, the room, um, the nursery with baby Bella, who was Hakeem's daughter, um, Lucius said to him, even on the night you were born, the heavens were in an uproar. You were in such a mad rush to come in this world, this world, and it has been and have been the same ever since. That is quintessential Aries, right? Like that's, he's saying when you were born, you were in such a rush and you're still in a rush. That is very Aries-like. Now, some of the characters who are not main characters, I may not have as much to say about, but I still want to feature them um, anyway. My, uh, Anika was in this for a very long time. Um, Anika. So all I have for Anika right now is a Scorpio sun, Aquarius moon. We never really quite get to see what Anika wants. Um, she's with Lucius for influence and power. You know, though they are a striking couple, you know, physically, there's a lack of chemistry between her and Lucius. There isn't a lot of understanding of what they're in a relationship for. Whereas with Cookie and Lucius, even when they're not in a relationship, you can sense and see the chemistry. Um, she does a lot of sneak deals. Okay. Um, she's very cunning. You no, know, once she doesn't get what she wants, she gets revenge. And, you know, and it's not just revenge as a Scorpio thing, but as a Scorpio son, you can see that she is there for power. And even when she has an opportunity to come back into Lucia's life after the engagement has been over, she wants a dib into empire. But it's like, but Anika, have you ever wanted to work in this industry? Right? So, you know, Cookie even says that she's an opportunist who will do anything to get ahead. I really feel like the character of Anika it was hard because, and again, certain characters don't serve primary focus, but it's kind of hard to understand what Nika, Nika wanted. And so that's why I don't like rising for it, right? She seems at odds with everyone. You know, anytime Anika's around someone, it, it never ends. And I mean, it never, it's, it's never a, a long-term relationship. It's never a long-term bond. It's never a long-term deal. You know, she'd likely be successful. If she has an Aquarius moon, she feels at odds. I think she would, she feels that she's not accepted. She's not embraced. You know, when the show first started, Cookie gets out of prison, but Lucius is with Anika. Um, and so, you know, that kind of turns everything around. And also you see that, but you can tell even before Lucius and, and Cookie started probably, you know, got back together. I think that was probably second or third season. It, it took a while. Um, that him and Anika, they're together, but it's, 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 it's a good look, right? There's really no real emotion to it. Though there are moments where they seem to like each other, we don't feel that chemistry. I do think being a Scorpio sun and Aquarius moon would mean like one that's a squaring energy, but she likely be successful if she figured out what to apply herself to, because that would be pretty good energy in terms of motivation and being able to really find people who are in her situation and help them transform is what I would say an Aquarius moon Scorpio some person could do. But even with her child, Bella, there seems to be a lack of connection. Yeah, she comes back for Bella after she has to leave, but we don't see her truly connect with anyone because Tiana ends up raising baby Bella. So we have to understand, and I know Anika went to jail and all those other things, but like we have to understand that, um, you know, this character, we don't see a lot of complexity. Now, interesting fact for those who don't know, she is in real life married to Trey Byers, who played Andre Lyons. And then, um, so they're, they're actually married in real life. Rhonda is the first wife of Andre Lyon. Not, she is more so, I think they didn't do, it was probably intentional, right? The, the show isn't about Rhonda, it's about the, the um, Lyon family. But there wasn't a lot of dimension to Rhonda. The only time we really see her break out of character is after she falls, you know, she's Anika, pushes her down the steps. At first, they didn't know it was Anika. You know, it's very dramatic. It's a soap opera type of energy to Empire. But um, pushed her down the steps and Rhonda lost her baby. Of course, she was distraught, right? But we don't really see a lot of Rhonda, right? We see that she's very protective over Andre, um, even killed somebody for Andre. 
accidentally, right? So when Vernon was, um, and, and Andre were fighting, she got scared and took something and hit um, Vernon in the head. And he, you know, to show, so of course it was so, uh, you know, so hard that he died and they had to cover it up. So a lot with this protective nature, right? Even the fact that like, she's a Taurus moon, I'm saying, because like she, that happened, and I'm not saying Taurus moons would do this. I'm saying her reaction, she didn't, it, it happened and she just goes back to work. Like, she just goes back to normal. You know, um, she is a little, you know, skittish after the, the, um, after she hits Vernon in the head and they have to go bury him in the woods. But it's like, she kind of doesn't miss a beat, right? And I'm like this, okay, so this is probably someone who is, you know, for her, she justified it by saying, I was helping Andre. Everything was about Andre. That is why I don't have a lot about Rhonda because there wasn't a lot of character development. Now, she was very doting and caring, leading me to say, okay, there's a cancer rising nature. I think if she's a cancer rising, that would conjunct Andre's cancer son. So I could see how that would work. Um, she works in fashion industry, cares about appearance and image, um, you know, in the way she looked and the way she dressed. Um, and that's why I said there's a Libra nature there, right? And also, I think she would need good relationships with people to be in the fashion industry and create those connections. But also, we know that Taurus is also ruled by Venus. And so I definitely getting a Venus vibe from Rhonda. For the most part, she's not a problematic character. She doesn't really bother anybody, but she protects Andre. So the only time she really says anything about the family is when they are mistreating Andre or when she feels something isn't fair. That's a Libra quality Libra son. That's not fair, Andre. You should be getting this. That's not fair. You should be getting more money, right? That's when we see Rhonda's, you know, but Rhonda kind of come out of her shell. Now, she's willing to deal with situations if there is some reward or outcome in the end right? Such as not being close to Andre's family. She's willing to deal with that. She's willing to kind of take that. There really is no closeness between them. Um, she's kind of just there, right? When there's family dinners, Rhonda's there, but there is no real, it doesn't seem like a, a, a relationship with his family members, but she's willing to be there because she's there for him, but she also wants him to get his, so that she can get hers, okay? Becky, I'm putting as a Pisces, Sun, Taurus, Moon, Libra, Rising. She's sweet, but slightly an opportunist. But that's only because she didn't feel recognized, right? Um, she takes a job with Kingsley when he asks Lucia. So you have to understand sometimes Libra is not going to pick sides. And it's like, if she is a Taurus moon for her own protection and wants to stay working with someone who took out her former boss or who took her former boss, you know, took his position, she's going to do it, right? Um, we also have to understand like Pisces has this kind of universal like connection or universal love. And sometimes when we looked at Becky, she kind of accepted everyone. It's kind of like... Well, you know, like let's look at the bright side, or let's look at this, or like let's look at that. Like she, it, it, and she did have loyalty. I would say she had loyalty when she realized that Kingsley had gone too far and was trying to really sabotage Lucia's legacy. She went and told, um, she went and told. I think I don't remember she told Lucius, but I know she told Thirsty who was working with Lucius. So she does have a sense of loyalty, but Becky is really just trying to live her dream. And she's very good at what she does. She's very good at talent and knowing talent and knowing the right moves behind the scenes. Um, Becky is rarely in drama and is more focused on her work. That's why I said there has to be some earth energy in Becky, right? I'm pretty sure she also could have been like a Taurus rising for all intents and purposes. Maybe, I don't know. Um, she doesn't challenge things. She waits her turn. And I'm like, this is a very patient person. This is not a fiery energy. It may not even be an air energy. So that's why I settled on these signs here. Um, when her dream happened, we see the more go-getter, less loyal part of her, right? When she gets her dream opportunity to really feel secure in her role, there we go. And there's nothing, I don't say there's anything wrong with that. Becky's not a problematic character. There's no... You know, and she's Jamal's best friend. So you see, like, her and Jamal's relationship, remember, he would be a potential, what, Pisces moon. I mean, Pisces, uh, yeah, Pisces moon. She's a Pisces sun, that connection between her and Jamal. Also, if he's a Virgo and she's a Taurus, then there, then there's also another, there's a trine energy going on there, right? And if he, you know, so we, we see that there could be a reason why her and Jamal are best friends. Um, everyone seems to think Becky's on their side. <laughs> she seeks partnership even when she branches on her own. So everyone kind of views Becky as like, uh, you know, some uh, earlier on she feels like she's the help, and that's why she has to grow into her role because she just kind of she's too sweet, she's too nice. But even when she branches out on her own with Nicole Airy Parker's character, even when she branches out on her own, notice that Becky never like she likes being around people. She likes feeling she's supporting something. But she does kind of have her own needs because we do see even when she does branch out and have they start their own label. 
um her nicole airy parker's character i don't remember the character's name let me see if i can look it up real quick um i just like to be exact oh becky's an asset you know um and people don't always i think they notice it but they're not they don't do anything about it in the beginning you know what i mean like they notice that she's an asset but they don't do anything um about it until it's too late where you know she's trying to leave for another company and they have to ask her back um so let me see what her character's name was in giselle her name is giselle in this show um nicole airy parker a character um becky's an asset she's she's resourceful and she knows a lot about the industry okay she's really strong in that regard and she's overlooked often due to her not being competitive these are not really competitive signs well, my point is that that's not a cut these are not cutthroat signs these are not this is not andre's chart where we can see andre wants to get ahead right we're seeing that you know she this is an industry that is you know cutthroat like the music industry certain industries are hard because you have to make really you know um you have to make really hard business decisions. You have to sometimes do things that can seem like you're going against somebody in order to win. So that's one thing I would notice about Becky. All right, so Tiana. I definitely would say Tiana has a very creative nature to her. She's very whimsical. She's very, you know, she, she just wants to create music and she just wants to be seen also. She does care about her popularity, which is why I would say there's a Leo rising energy there. But I also feel like she has a very musically inclined type of energy. She's very into what she does. And it's really not an egotistical way, but she does have like a diva energy to her as well. But, you know, she only got upset when Nessa ruined her opportunity. So when I'm looking at her chart, it's like, Leo, I'm about to perform. I'm going to be seen and you just messed up my gown. So now I can't perform like that scenario that happened. You don't really see Tiana upset a lot. You do see her upset a lot with Hakeem. Um, with Hakeem, there's a lot going on between them. And it would be interesting because if Hakeem is a Libra moon, then their moons are squaring. And that means emotionally, her and Hakeem in this relationship or this off and on relationship, they actually need very different things. Okay. Um, you know, she cares a lot about her career, her creative expression. She cares about authentically being her, which is why I also connected it to a Cancer Moon Pisces Sun situation. Um, the ability to express through the Leo rising, but also caring about the, the authenticity of her, her creativity, which would be more about those water signs in, in a person that is, um, you know, an entertainer. Um, she takes care of Hakeem's daughter, Bella, as her own. Um, that's a very motherly thing. That's a very, nat you know, that's a very, um... It's a very, you know, maternal, um, you know, aspect to her. You know, she did have the child with Hakeem Prince, but she didn't have to take in his daughter as her own, especially after they broke up. So like when I say take her on, I don't mean she's around while he's with his child. I mean, literally, she was raising the daughter while Hakeem was kind of like doing his thing, kind of being irresponsible. She had Bella with her or it was more like a situation where she had the kids more full time and then Hakeem would have them on the weekends. And so that's one thing that stood out to me. Now, I did say that Hakeem, I think, could also be a Leo rising. But remember, with my degrees and how I deal with degrees, I would say, though, they have different Leo rising degrees because Hakeem, they're both entertainers, but the reason and mode of expression is different. Her is about expression and wanting to be popular and seen, but his is about, I want to be seen as uh, powerful. Hakeem is, I want to be seen as that guy, right? That's a very, it's a very, it's kind of a different level. So I would say the risings would certainly be different degrees. Thirsty. Now, Thirsty, you can kind of look at him as a very intelligent henchman, okay? He is Lucia's kind of right-hand man when it comes to cover-ups, hiding stuff, hiding money, getting over on people that's thirsty, okay? But Thirsty and, and Lucius, you know, they make, you know, because of the villains against them are usually worse. <laughs> you, they, can't, they make you like Lucius. The people that are against Lucius are so bad, they make you like him. Um, now, he, I would say Thirsty is a Virgo sun, Taurus moon, Scorpio rising. I'm getting a very earth energy from him because... To do some of the things he did, he did, you kind of have to just be caring about the outcome. I'm about to get that job done, boss. That's a very Virgoan type of thing. Not saying I'm going to get it done, boss, because I've never said that to anyone before in my entire life. <laughs> like that's very subservient sounding. But like Virgo energy is about I'm getting this done. I know the right moves. And Thirsty was very methodical 
Um, and that's why I said there's a Virgo Scorpio situation here. Now, Virgo and Scorpio, especially together in a person's chart, can be a very perceptive, observant person who's able to get mac micro into the details and really unearth and pull out things and get into the weeds. And that is what I Thirsty did. He would, you know, he knew all the ways in which to get around the law, he knew all the ways in which to make Lucius win right? He's willing to do anything to get the job done. He doesn't have these emotional attachments to something. Now, where you can see other signs like, whoa, are we sure we're going to do that? Oh, that seems wrong. Oh, no. He doesn't have that, right? He's loyal to the Lion family. Okay. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because think about the difference with the Capricorn energy, which still could do the same thing if it's cutthroat, if it's ruthless, but Capricorn's going to try the, the traditional method first. Virgo is a mutable sign. So Virgo is going to analyze something and say, well, this is what makes the most sense to do in this particular moment. We're not worried about tradition Capricorn. But as a Taurus moon, he kind of just goes with the flow. We never really see thirsty angry. I'm not going to say he never had angry in the show, but I can't really recall a poignant moment when he did. So we don't really see that, okay? He's very procedural and useful to Lucia's business operation. He doesn't take it personal when Lucius fires him because it was a ploy. And the reason I said Scorpio rising is because these situations they have going on are intense. Cover up murders, covering up um, illegal activity and things of that nature. And Scorpio energy, the rising especially is the responsive activeness activity to things like that. And his ability to do it was really strong. And so that's why I'm like, okay, I think there would be a Scorpio rising energy to him. Now, Jeff Kingsley is the, um, the child of Lucius. So Lucius has three sons. But then throughout the later season, <laughs> there's this guy Kingsley who rises to the top as um, once Lucius' friend Eddie came into the role, kind of tried to take the, the business from Lucius. There was a lot of power moves. I'm not going to go into details. But eventually what ended up happening was Lucius and Cookie, they kind of got outbidded for the company. Kingsley becomes the head honcho. Now, what we learn throughout Kingsley's issue and, and his personal drama with Lucius is that this is his Ill, his not illegitimate, but his illegitimate child that he had before he even met Cookie, okay? But he didn't know about him. But the kid is still mad. He's not a kid. He's a grown man, but he's mad at him anyway. You know, these how these shows are. It's like, I didn't know about you, but I hate you. You didn't know about me, but I hate you anyway. Aquarius Sun, Scorpio Moon, Taurus Rising. There's an intense square. This guy is very successful. Um, he's very successful. He's made a lot of money at a very young age. He's a tech genius. I'm saying Aquarian. That Aquarian nature. One, he seems very detached um, from anything, right? There's not a lot of connectivity he has. Now, even when his mom, he goes to visit his mom in the hospital, you can sense that Kingsley's doing it out of obligation, right? I'm doing this out of obligation. I'm doing this because this is my mother. And this need to make Lucius pay is a Scorpio moon energy, okay? And I said that it would be interesting because I would bet him and Lucius could have the same moon. Now, what I would say is, um, not to say all Aquariuses are like this, but his, his square, his need, his insatiable need to control and dominate everything. He also didn't understand music. He understood numbers. So he didn't really have the true respect for the industry or respect for the music, which really annoyed Lucius, right? And this is before he knew this was his son. Um, he desired to belong. He watched, you know, the three Lion brothers with their dad. This is before they knew. This actually might be the picture from that moment. And he's longing to be a part of it, but he still wants revenge because he's still mad. He still is holding on, right? Because Aquarius can let go of the emotional attachment, but Scorpio can't. And so that's, a, that's why these signs are squaring each other, right? Now, um, I said that he could have a Scorpio moon like Lucius because both of them could have experienced traumatic childhoods. And sometimes when you see parent and child charts you can kind of see generational trauma or things you know again lucius didn't know about him didn't know that he had ever existed until the situation happened and instead of telling him hey i'm your long lost son kingsley played a lot of mind games took over his company you know it's a soap opera type of energy he appears like a like a practical unbothered personality at first you think what you see is what you get and that's why i said i thought it was a taurus rising you know practical down to earth but underneath you have a lot of emotional upheaval through a scorpio moon right um you you think what you see is what you get but it's really it's him hiding his secrets he hides who his father is he hides his rage his rage there's a scene where he takes this item um this like this sharp item that makes his hand bleed right very un, 
under the surface things and that could also be the kind of quirks or strange oddities you can sometimes see with Aquarius energy not just the suns but anytime there's Aquarius energy now sometimes quirks are good sometimes being strange or being different is good it, it stands helps you stand out but he didn't have his father his mom is is saying that his father left even though Lucius never knew so there's all these other complexes that Jeff Kingsley is developing that kind of made him this character be very like sociopathic okay um, he clings to his version of the truth and intensely, and intensely, which is the Scorpio moon. At first, um, Lucius like, I didn't know. I didn't know you existed. But again, Scorpio clings to what it has decided to cling to. Now, he does eventually come around the end, but, you know, it, it wasn't like a, a fairy tale uh, reunion, even though at the end, Lucius did accept him and he tried to become a part of the family, but he was too much because Kingsley always felt like the lion boys that, that um, the sons that um, Lucius had would always come before him and he had, you know. So that is basically it for this. Um, I, if this, if you like this, please hit the like button. If you have any, again, suggestions would be kind of hard because it depends on what shows I watch, but I might, um, you know, do this again with some other characters.